While artists are generally defined, at least in the public eye, by their accomplishments, Mary Margaret O'Hara presents a rather unique case. Last year, the UK newspaper The Guardian called her one of modern music's most mysterious creatures, and it's an often repeated sentiment based to a large degree on what Mary Margaret O'Hara hasn't done which is play Celebrity or record a follow-up album to Miss America, her 1988 classic debut, regularly cited as one of the best albums in rock or pop in the 20th century. That isn't to say she's reclusive or shy. The Canadian singer-songwriter over the past 20 years has made a number of notable appearances. There was an EP of Christmas songs, a film soundtrack, some acting gigs, and even a turn doing backup vocals for Morrissey, as well as a few remarkable concert performances and tribute album contributions. And right now, here in Studio Q, Brushing her hair back. I'm glad you got red lighting in here. Mary Margaret O'Hara. Hello. (laughs) Halo, statue. You ever heard that? That that was a lot of fun watching you as we started to play that song. It freaked me out. Why did you get so freaked out? You put your hands on your head. You were, I was. Put your hands on your head. That's the thing I'm trying to bring back to a new day. Yeah. I haven't, that's, I haven't sang that song or thought of that song. And it was the one that kind of was going to get me shut if I didn't do it it was going to get me shut out of even making an album after I did all this stuff in Wales in 84 and then I came back and showed them and they said that's there's one song to make me sick to my stomach and that was um you'll be loved again and then they said the only thing you got you're going to be able to, you got to put words to this song a new day and I said that's, that was just relaxing the band one day because uh Dave Pilch was freaking out at this bass part it's just a jam yeah and I and Dave loved it do 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 and I was like I wasn't going to make it a song so I wrote the words on the bus going to phase one we did overdubs in uh, later the same, what was that CBC show? Later, later the, the same, same day. Year. Yeah. Year. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> later the same year, yes, thank well, you. Well, it was later That's the same That's distortion year. humor, yeah, go ahead. <laughs> and uh, wow, you've got me, that's good. And then you call me a singer-songwriter just to stick the knife in. <laughs> well, what's and wrong you forget with that? The, I'm only kidding. Yeah, you don't like that. You don't. Do, but oh. Did you? Did you? But what were you thinking when you heard that back after your initial? Uh, I think my family would be laughing like, "You got it now, Mary." Because <laughs> if they put a song on me, turn that off. Oh, Mary, listen to it. Come on. You don't like listening to your own stuff. Well, would you? If you were me. No. Yes, I would. I would. Li- I think that r- r- album I'm is sorry. remarkable. I love how you were moving to. I, that's so nice. Actually, I feel very like I kicked myself in my pants right now. It's not nice. Um, I'm grateful for things, but I guess. I don't know. It's like a backwash in the end of a drink, a backstory that I should just give you, up. You've put behind you. <laughs> no, I mean, I should, I should, I'm happy. I'm happy you like that. I, I and love that. it's the only that. one that people relate I'm to. Not so the, no, it's not. The it record was, company was around. Well, CBC. It's the only trouble one. We, we, it was just a shorter <laughs> one. We thought we'd... <laughs> <laughs> Tonight I'm we're jumping on. I'm sorry. Yeah. Well, uh, you know, uh, since we announced that you were going to come on our show, Mary Margaret, we've received quite a few words expressing anticipatory su- surprise, not the least of which was from your own sister, Catherine O'Hara, who was sitting where her. you were. I love your interview with I her. Loved the, I loved talking to her. But you she did. was so excited. She First of all, she couldn't believe it. I don't know why she couldn't believe it, but she was so excited There's that you'd that be coming on. Right there she <laughs> <laughs> and doing an interview. As excited as she is. <laughs> uh, but so, uh, you know, do you feel like you're one of, I'm quoting back this Guardian piece here, modern music's most mysterious creatures? I wrote that. I paid a lot of money to get that in the Guardian. <laughs> Wait a second. Most mysterious. Uh, paradoxical and humorous. I love the Dan Aykroyd and his father when he said the universe was mysterious, paradoxical, and humorous. So <laughs> I'll go for that. But, um... Do I, did you say do I agree or do I, do well, I how deserve do you, it? How do you, you see yourself? You how do you see yourself when people call you a mysterious how I, creature? How do I see myself? I actually don't want to. <laughs> that's how you get That's how you get by, I think. You, but don't, you don't get you very don't far. You don't focus on what, you, what people might. I probably see. focus on it too much. And as I try to go, Ooh, it's probably all you know, with me too much. You know? Right. And I'm it's not called, helping, quoting back the Guardian. You're having a big helping. <laughs> I'm sorry. Well, you're helping. Well, I, you know, I, I, let, let's be more specific then about uh, about your music and, and as it leads into what you're doing tonight with improvisations. When critics talk about you, they often rhapsodize with a fair degree of passion, I might add, about the inventive quality of your voice and your ability to improvise with it so seemingly effortless. effortless let's see, no, I can't say the word. Effortlessly. E- effortlessly. How did you develop that vocal style? Where did the, the penchant for improv come from? 
I like that word. Thank you. I'm going to use that at the Can West Cabaret imp- Festival, the <laughs> distillery district. Um, sorry, penchant. I, w- I wasn't going to say penchant with you in the room. Yeah, you know, no, because I'm, I'm pretty close to the pen- <laughs> penchant years. <laughs> uh, where'd that come from? You know what? I think that maybe I don't really express myself well in words. And uh, I think I am. And then I hear myself back, which I don't want to do in this case, the interview today. Uh, and something, it just hits me now that I have to say this. My sister talked about something, and she brought it up again. We were laughing afterwards. I said, Catherine, what about, and I mentioned it. She said, oh, Mary. Uh, she said we didn't have books at our house, kind of. And we That's actually right. didn't, she, but we had, and she said, came on he, you, and she was so fun saying that. Cause she said, what did I do? My mother <laughs> would kill me. And uh, she said, well, we did have, uh, but we did have the book of knowledge. And I love the book of knowledge, and she did too. And there'd be what to do in a, what to do in a day in May. And a little, I used one thing at school. The book of knowledge. Art college, I made like a thing the, out of the, the book of knowledge. The encyclopedia set? The yeah. book of knowledge? Yeah. It's, from, it's really old, with little angels flying yeah. at the top of the thing. Oh, it's beautiful. Yeah. And I love that book. And I also loved a book I found myself somewhere in the house with. And I only realized that about quite a few years ago. And no one else read it in the house like I dreamed it. And it was um, The Wishing Chair. Hmm. Um, What's that name of the person? Oh, sorry, bad. Help me, readers and, and commenters, tormentors. Right. They might not get the it podcast. to us in time. Well, me. Uh, no, no. CBC I knew dossier. it a while ago. And then there was another book, and I read it front to back, and I was 11 years old, and the book was Ulysses. And I hid away with that book thinking, like, so finally somebody's talking normal. Well, that sounds You weird. really read Ulysses at the uh, age see of 11. That? I never told people that. Some, I told that once in England. Yes, I did. But, but I'm not a reader. It's a very dense book. I know, but I thought I was home, like, dear God, somebody's talking normally. You understood. You, you felt I didn't understand. I just thought, okay. I just hide away. And I thought it was my brother Tom's book. He was in the seminary around that time. And it was up in his room. And I talked to him last week. He says, I think it was Michael. So I said, Tommy, Michael was four years old. How could he have a copy of Ulysses at that time? <laughs> or five. But you're serious when you say it resonated for you. I don't say it because it sounds stupid, but I mean, like, I think that maybe improvisation stuff, I I feel very... it makes sense. Okay, good. It totally makes sense. I had to say it. No, 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 it totally, you know... Gavin gave me your blessing. Look, the first two, uh, the first two uh, (laughs) chapters of Ulysses are, are a stream of consciousness, really. I mean, Stephen Dedalus is what's happening in his head, Right. So that it very much is like improvisation. I get what you're saying. I guess, but I just I can't believe you did that at 11. <laughs> oh, I don't know. I really thought like, oh, finally someone is, finally someone's talking normal to me. I remember thinking it when I was little, like, I'm working really hard to make sense, kind of. Um, as now I do. <laughs> um, trying to make sense and, and really thinking like, why don't you come around to my side once in a while? Mm. When I would, and even now, look, jumping in on you, jumping in on people, I try to, Work hard at doing that. Oh, Even Catherine's great at that. We all were jumping on each other because we're seven kids. Yeah. And it was fun, and we could do it. Nobody goes, yeah. you know? But I got to get rid of it. I got to put but, a plug in it. But conversations oh. <laughs> for you are, are like improvisation, too. The, the, the you are a good dancer. Every time I listen to your interviews, you, like, play with each person. Catherine, when you were, like, dancing, it was beautiful. And she knows how to, like, it was very beautiful. Yeah. And you do that with each person you meet, so. Well, thank you. I don't, are, I don't you, know. are you improving right now? Oh, yeah, but I do write it all down. It's like it's a chart that <laughs> I had Robert Wilson do. You never mentioned the Black Rider. With Tom. Tom Waits, yeah, you mean? With Tom, yeah, yeah, with yeah. Tom. Never mind. Tom, I, mean, I don't know him by his first name. <laughs> Tom. I just say, is that what you mean? By never mind. No, 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 no. Oh, the Black Rider. That's what I think of. You'll find out, man. You'll be so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so if, if this is the way that you... Uh, this is the way you are. A wonderful guy. Yeah, thank he's you. handsome too. Just, uh, thank you. He's You're, handsome. He's too. looking around the room. You're just desperate to talk to anybody but me. If you, I'm, if, if I've been <laughs> desperate to talk to you for years. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. If, I got the red. Gold. I wonder if I mean is part of um, the fact that you enjoy. I mean, you obviously enjoy these improvisational gigs like you're doing tonight. Otherwise, you wouldn't do them, right? Yeah. Right. So is there is the seduction of that that it is by its nature more f- free flowing than something like an al- recording an album that uh, where you have to sort of be pinned down. You have to. You got three minutes right now. Sing on top of this song. No, because I don't. Well, I shouldn't say no, but I think I. I guess I'm kidding myself, but I feel like I write and put it together like it was improvisation, and I go as far as I can with. I think it comes from. S- like a Laurel, help me. This is, sorry. Uh, I think it comes. Give me one more chance That's at okay, that. Yeah, you got all the time. We just, no, just I know you can edit a lot. This one, no, no, no you can't. It's live. Oh, no, it's so. we're live. Oh, Go yeah, ahead. Yeah, 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 yeah. Got it. Yeah, yeah. That's what we are. Uh, 
please ask me again, dear. <laughs> well, I, I just, you're, it makes sense that you're such a master at improvisation because your mind seems to be working very quickly and you, and you, move, you move from subject to subject very quickly. Would that be right? Yes, but you, you said a great thing that made me, helped me to express it, and I lost it about uh, like about being pinned down on an, in an album setting. Yeah, like when you, yeah, when I when I wrote that or did that album, I would all I would. It does come down to structure, but you, uh, I feels like every time I do it, like Bodies in Trouble, I couldn't really do the uh, video for that on camera, I had to say, I'm going to be in and out, and in and out, because mm. I would hit the notes every time I do it differently. And that take was the take that I'd hit. It's like, if there are, if there are notes, there's like laser notes in between, you know, mm. or laser points to come in. But I couldn't copy it or go like, what? That would make me feel very dead, and I wouldn't be able to do that. So it, I think I've set myself up to have a life within structures that they feel like improvising to me. But they are pretty structured, I guess. They don't feel like that anymore. And it doesn't make me think like, okay, here's the one. we gotta, I got to tack this on at this time. So I've made it free in my own way, I think. And s other ones are more simple you know and their songs and you let them be and it's lovely to do that but I think my natural tendency is to want to just not I think this improvisation or whatever they want to call it or free improv or or improvisational music and the history mm -hmm. of it I, I read where it said that uh the first music must have been free improv they must have just uh, you know so it's very um the first music very was free wild jazz things. it's very <laughs> wild things no it's like you really um it's instinctual. You just go, you know, and some people are really uncomfortable. You don't know who's going to be uncomfortable. I went down, I did a show with it down at um, John Zorn's place, The Stone, in New York City. Just a name, a, just a drop a yes. <laughs> name. <laughs> and uh, I bought a really beautiful friend of mine who plays amazingly improvising within structures, but you, won't, you don't think that somebody within structures is, wouldn't want to take that out of structure. But when we finished, I, thought, I felt really uncomfortable during one of the sets we did two nights, and I thought... And I was really looking forward to the second night with my friend because we did it with New York people the night before and we got loose, but it was like, oh, it's going to be great tomorrow night. Mm -hmm. And the next night was like, ooh, and I thought, what's happened? I usually feel good doing this. And after the show was over, my friend said, oh, I hate doing that. Mm. So that took them out of, um, and I think audience sometimes will. I sometimes don't want to. Well, there's a comfort level with structure within structure as opposed yeah. to improv within structure. But I just feel so much more free at that point. And also you can you can wank and you can bother people, but when it flows and it's good, whoever will be there for it will, will feel it too. It's like, you know, I think I wrote that down. Some, I said, like, you let it, it's in the silly can west. Not the silly can west, it's in my silly thing. Um, you know, you let it happen. Or I like this idea for music, you let it happen as much as you make it happen, sometimes more than you make it happen. But you can't really, there's all kinds of memories in your head. There's that day that you go up there, you want to be free and your own day happened or you're, or I feel a lot of stuff in rooms or maybe, like we did a while ago, we sold out a place, we made $15 each, but that's how much, I shouldn't tell that to the poor people <laughs> paying for the tickets. They wouldn't let me call it free improv. It's Mary, they're going to think it's free. Mm. But to be able to work with someone like Michael Snow, which I'm really kind of afraid to do at the first right now, too, because not afraid, but pretty presumptuous to ask him. Aiden Close, thank you. I'm the presumptuous one to bug you to ask him. Um, I, I, you know, I love to do that, and I want to take a chance, and I hope that people will who want to come to this will accept. You know, they don't have to accept it. They can walk out, but... um. <laughs> For me, it's I, I loved. I'd love to record it, you know, because then you, nobody's watching you. It's like, well, I like to do radio interviews. Why did you take radio away and put it on TV? Well, because anyway. it's fun to watch sometimes. Well, that's because you're yeah. handsome and you're young. <laughs> well, I would have liked I don't know about it that. too when I was only fifty-eight or something. <laughs> right, right. Uh, you look, you look very. You actually look great. Uh, but uh, now, let me. If you, if you, if you, can I ask you about Miss America? Just a couple of questions. Yeah. Because, because normally artists come in here and we talk about their latest album. In this case, your latest album is a Miss America from 1988, right? Yeah. That's the, the last. What and, about you, Moxie, man? <laughs> well, we, exactly. Well, you could ask me about my latest album as well. So so do you, but this this thing follows you around, right? It's been, uh, I want to get this from you. 20, 21 years since you made this record. It's regularly called one of the greatest records in history. I mean, Mojo Magazine just named it one of the top albums of the 20th century. Uh, and uh, you, one of the top 100 cult heroes. Well, it wasn't an easy process for you, making this record. What What do you think of when you think of Miss America now? I think of when Robert, what's his name, and Scrooge goes up with his chains and says, don't go there. Does, does Scrooge with the chains of Miss America on me, even though I'm proud to wear them? No. I think that um, I did that quickly, I think, that record. I work fast. And then it was held up for four years, and for the 
record company, they had to say, no, no, it was just put together in two weeks of mixing. Mm. So I, I'd like to tell the story of the thing, because there's so much false stuff out there, and people who say they did this and that. And, uh, but I don't feel bad about making music at all, at all in Wales and, the, and, the, and doing the overdubs and uh, the plans that I had for it. And, the, and I feel badly sometimes about the four pieces that are kind of lost. I guess they were going to, I was going to choose less of a ballad album. Mm -hmm. But by the end of them, even letting me put out the album, eventually I was like, okay. Because they offered me loads of things. Somebody's going to write you an album. This person came up. Lots of very heavy people came up. We're going to, you won't even have to come in the studio until we sing. We're going to arrange your music. I said, oh, I just want to put that record out. So when I think of it, it's a lot of crap that I don't, I don't, I don't want to hold on to. But I think it's in my cells. And it's like, I just... I like to, uh, I'm so happy that people like it, but I, I'm so happy that people like you like my music, as who said that in Second City? <laughs> Remember? <laughs> the days of our wives. Um, when I think of it, well, what do I think of it? I think you'll get a doctor in here. Get the psych ward. <laughs> no, as I said before about wanting to throw things off and feeling them, I probably mm -hmm. feel it too much, but I also go like, ah, who cares? But I d get my collar, my get my back up sometimes and my collar. When I hear stories about it, it's like, oh, what the heck are you right. talking about? You know, but are it was a proud? quick record. Are you proud of it? I'm proud of it, yeah. Do you, I'm, do you like I'm proud the of the story of it, to tell you the truth, but I've never really told it. When are you going to tell the story of it? Wouldn't it be boring? As soon as I think of it, I think, like, what a bore for you to I don't think so. your low horse and uh -huh. do that. You, obviously, you feel like there's th some things, there's misconceptions. <laughs> I'll be, I've been hurt. Finally. <laughs> no. No, but it's not a thing where, like, I, I thought I your sister I'm, was hard to interview. This she's, is, you, you, you're, you're, got it down. Uh, she's fantastic. I got to yeah. get a feed through her. Like, she's got to go through <laughs> me. Like, a, we could work well together. We did. We you started things. a second album, mm -hmm. right, after Miss America? Yeah. Well, so what happened to that? Can you tell the story of that? Yeah, the thing was over. There's all these nice write-ups write and people saying, you know, it's great, but it was just like, whoo, this is a little too much for all those years. And then saying, like, Somebody else produced it. It was like, what? The person wasn't even there. All this stuff, even though I should have been so happy, and I was with the reviews, and they were so kind, especially in England. Uh, a friend, I hired a manager. She was a really go-getter and really great lady. So she got me money for the first time as far as, um, she got me an advance. Mm. So I took an advance, and I paid the band. I divided it up between us. And I had it in my mind that would do this record, and they loved these songs I was doing. And I had this thing, and I just got into this, like, I do not want to be encouraged by you because they, they suddenly love me. And I was saying, yeah, I'll do that one. I felt like I was being like, what is that when, when it's like, you anyway, know what it reminds me of? And I think it's just my own psyche, nothing to do with Virgin. They were lovely people and especially one man there. So beautiful, Jeremy LaSalle, so I'll say his name. Um, it was almost like, you know, <laughs> I, made, I guess I made it like this, but you know Jimmy Stewart in, um, when he says, you scurry, he's going to shake the hand? <laughs> <laughs> you scurry, little spider. That's what I felt like, Whew. And I had these songs that, what am I doing those songs for? And I pulled out, and I'd given the money away to the band. They'd spent it. Mm. And so they were going to sue me for this 20 something thousand dollars. And, and then it went on and on and on. And I just kind of went back like, Phew. and then I waited till it was over, the record deal. Sorry. And then? And then? I won't tell. And then <laughs> on here, I'll write the story. Well, yeah, yeah, then I'll get Captain yeah, to edit it. <laughs> well, it won't be a live tape. You, you said earlier, well, that, all of that's really interesting. I mean, what you, what you have to, and it is good to hear it from you, you know, uh, because there are a lot of stories about what what happened and what went down. Um, you, you you said... Can West Cabaret? Yeah. I'm going to direct your calls. <laughs> Sorry. I'm going to get to the Can West Cabaret. I know, terrible. Uh, which is tonight. And, and, and I'm sorry. You said earlier that... Um, that you're you're afraid a little afraid tonight because you're, you're you're playing with a couple of heavy hitters. Well, you have no reason to be afraid, of course, but but uh, some fantastic players, and it's amazing the number of artists that come in here, Mar Mary Margaret, who are incredibly successful and very talented, and who the world uh, tell them they're talented, who are still governed or or feel a lot of fear you know, uh, in and around their work and, and, mm -hmm. and what they do and, and even questioning their own ability. How much is, is, is does fear occupy uh, you as an artist? I couldn't have fear if I was going to... I don't think you can be... Oh, I've got lots of fears, but I there's a certain fearlessness I have that I think it's beyond... Um, I don't want to talk. I'm going to jinx myself. Um, but it's it's more like people... The things that I'm not afraid of, I wouldn't want to talk about something because I think they scare people. Maybe it's stuff that... I don't know, it's out, out kind of out stuff. And they're not anything that I read about. or It's just in me. And they, I had to grow up with them. And I'm like, what's wrong with me? And then I think, no, it's not wrong. It's what you are. So there's things I know that are, I know I've seen, I've, I've heard, and I know people are very scared of certain levels of life or spirit or whatever. 
what am I talking about? But I'm fearful in ways of like being like, almost like, who do you think you are? Like I'm a little uh, thing going, now what is that psychological thing? That's called a, well, I read about psychology. What is the thing where <laughs> you're not only a narcissist, but a, what's another one, history? On, or you think you're going to be annihilated? It feels like when I was little, it's almost like you are, you have the total right to be yourself, right? Mm. But you got to watch out and be careful and not, I don't want to hurt anybody. And, and I've seen people, they'll protect their beliefs to the point that they'll say you don't even exist, right? So I'm not fearful in, when I think of doing improv, it's just like, whoa, come on along. But I do get embarrassed because there's an audience there, we're going to do live. And with, I've never played with Michael, who's just so revered and, and beautiful, ma- really funny, he's so sweet and funny. I don't really know him well. I just met him once at this somewhere there that Aiden and I did a show at, great little place in Toronto, somewhere there. <laughs> um, yeah, thanks for giving props to somewhere there. Play with Christine yeah. Duncan and John... Keep doing his name wrong. Lighthouse. Um, sorry, Cro- crops, crops, no. <laughs> prop circles. Props, yeah. <laughs> um, sorry. Oh God, I can't even keep it together. You're without totally keeping it together. Props. We were talking about so so the, it doesn't so your fears aren't necessarily. Hey, really... I'm gonna pull a belly bob. Belly bob. It's like doing. It's like doing um. Yeah. Cole It'll be a lot daughter. easier for you. Belly bob. Help me. <laughs> what? Sorry. Uh, oh. Um, well, uh, you know, what about, how do you feel about the way other people feel about you? I mean, many of today's most celebrated musicians sing your praises. Bands like Radiohead, R.E.M., uh, Bonnie Prince Billy, by the way. Um, wh- wh- who are you sang with earlier this year? D- does that up. kind of recognition mean something to you? Do you, do you? do you carry that around proudly, that, that R.E.M. And, and Radiohead are, are, are major boosters? You know, I feel badly when I, if I, you know what, uh, I keep trying to push myself and say, like, okay, look, pretend you're looking back. And I think, why didn't I ever phone any of them? Why don't I say thanks? Because I think, like, I go see um, one of the big guys. I don't know if you mentioned him. He's such a doll. And I'm always embarrassed, like, the fans, like, I feel like lower than fans. When who they we, like me, I feel about? lower than a fan. Michael well, I don't know what that is. Who's yeah, who's, sorry. Yeah. But when, I, they, when they come up to me, Mary, Mary, I swear I feel lower than a fan. Why, I don't know what that why means. Why do you feel that way? I don't mean lower than a fan. Sorry, fans. <laughs> oh, dear God. Am I ever Even lower than one fan? of your fans, yeah. <laughs> no, you... you what am I saying? <laughs> 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 I'm sorry. <laughs> All over you the world. You mean lower than I a fan. Wait, what? You fat. <laughs> lower than fan poop. <laughs> <laughs> right, right, right. right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I meant that as a point, not against fans, but like I don't have a... And then I think they're going to think I'm off... What's no. it called when you're standoffish? Right. We like, understand yeah, what you I'm mean. I'm coming but off as so like I don't. I'm embarrassed around them. Like, you're embarrassed like that me? they think you're so like great. Me? Yeah, because I think they think they're great, and I love how they think they're great. And I don't think <laughs> I'm that great. <laughs> I love people who love. I saw Sarah Sleen, and I someone like Sarah McLaughlin, Sarah Sleen. Who else? Jenny Lanois. They love themselves, and I love that that goes into the world. And I don't want to screw anybody up or come from a place of hating myself. I don't think I hate myself. I feel like I have a right, like the trees and the birds, to be here. But I don't feel like a human right sometimes. Mm-hmm. It's like I'm not playing the game. And I think they play the game, and they have a healthy – they like to bathe in their voice. And I don't, couldn't even hear – they like, played a new day, and I'm like, oh, dear God, no. <laughs> yeah. But I don't know. I don't know. Do you love yourself? Yes, I do. <laughs> <laughs> no, can, can, I do love myself because I am loved, not from humans. I shouldn't say that. Humans are all loved too. We're all the right. same. We're all one thing. Um, Who are you loved by? You, John. I hope, not humans. I hope you, I hope you, I hope <laughs> the animal not. world. Oh boy, nice doing. Come on, Jane Sibri, help me out here. <laughs> no, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm curious. No, I mean, I mean, I think there's just a, gr- a thing you can, you can, you know, um, what's well, a source you can go into, and you are from. Right. Okay. So that's love. But I get in the way of stuff, and I think, well, what am I doing? So I kind of don't bother these people and hang out with them and phone them. And I think, like, they think I'm a snob, I guess. But I just feel like. I got you. Thank you. You feel it's uh, it's it's uh, you feel humility. Humiliated, T. <laughs> no, I was going to say, you feel humility. No, so. that's not good either. You're I'm modest. no Mike Myers. You're modest. I'm not modest like Mike Myers. No way. You're I'm not. no Mike Myers. How is Mike Myers modest? Oh, oh come on. Don't you know? Is he? Don't <laughs> you know? I'm sorry. What did you call me? I said, don't you know? I'm don't sorry. You know? Oh, okay. All right. No, it's okay. I don't, I don't know. Really, I'm sorry. <laughs> But uh, tell me about how you are occupying your time. I mean, you, you are best known as a singer and songwriter. But there is more to your life than just music. You've been a visual artist. You've taught art. You've acted in a number of films. Uh, are you creative in an organic way in everyday life? Like, what's a typical day like in, for Mary Margaret O'Hara? Lately, it's like nothing. Like It's like my dad. My dad sat. 
I feel like I should go away in a mountain. My dad was great that way. <laughs> he was very zen. He was the funniest guy. Great jazz music. That was the lucky penny I saw today. My dad throws me pennies um, from heaven. Mm. Uh, what was that question? Yeah, you just got me going on my dad. Oh, this is my dad in my arm. I can feel it. Mm. He, um, sorry. <laughs> but question he, about what, what you I do each day. About, you're thinking about I don't, you. I don't really do much. And I, can, I can't believe how much the time goes so quickly. And you like, it's almost like, I think when I made that album, I just didn't care. Like you get in the studio and they say, it's a studio time. I don't care. Like you don't think of time when you're doing things. And it's pretty um, presumptuous to think time's not going to go. And it is, but it feels like it's always here and has been. And, um, I'm surprised how little I can do in a day and feel full. But I actually mm. feel very badly late. And I think my father started to feel it like in his 80s, or he kind of felt like, whoa. Uh, not really. I think it was just a depression. It's almost like another birth. You know, you come in, there's all the promise, and the world thinks of promise, and you're going out. And you really know if there is a promise. So I think there's a kind of a bit of depression that people should respect more in the elderly. You know, like it's like another form of puberty almost, but where are they going? <laughs> and if you're lucky to get that far, it's beautiful too. Oh, what am I talking about? You talk about your sister and how much... You uh, revere her, how she's your... I'm talking about Catherine, that mm-hmm. sister. Uh, she's your favorite performer. And you, you've said in the past that you wish you had her drive. You know what? Catherine would say, Mary, what are you talking? I have no drive. Both of us, <laughs> she's the same as me. And I think I'm the same as her in ways. And she goes, I, could, I should do so much more. I was writing this thing all. Oh. Um, Catherine has, has got a great, great focus. And she was great since she was little. She did, and she told me years later, she said, I don't believe in the, when they tell me I'm good, and I don't believe when they tell me I'm bad. So she kept that thing, and she kept telling me to try to do that. But I'd hear someone say, like, heaven screaming zombie, or you're useless, or especially the internet mm. commenter tormentors. As I said, I stay away from that stuff. But I think Kat's very focused, and people trust Catherine. She makes them feel safe. And I think I'm th- trying to make people feel safe, and I think we're all equal. And then you realize, no, I'm bugging people. So you pull back a bit, you know? Um, but I, as far as her drive, it's, it's not so much drive with Catherine as it is kind of a grace and her, her, and her slow, steady working at um, accepting what is mm-hmm. and her making mistakes and letting herself. I'm always like careful and not, but not creatively. I'll go, Bleh. that's probably why I do free improv. It's just like, but not to bug people. It's just, I what just are you careful like, about? I think as a child would be careful. I'm careful uh, to, because of trust. Am I going to cry? you? <laughs> I mean, I like, know. I think of little kids, and I think, like, wow, they, they're they so open, and they're like, everything's, yeah, yeah, but they see the truth. And then it's like, as you get older, you protect, you got to wake up and protect yourself from things. Mm. So I often haven't done that. But I don't want to blame anyone, because um, I often thought of people like my children. Isn't that a sad thing to say? I often think that's not their fault. They don't mean to do it. At the detriment of things that went into me, like, ooh, mm-hmm. throw, but not that it's anyone's fault. It's what you're bringing in to learn from. But Catherine has a good thing of, away from it and but I think we all could do with more drive in our family except for who Michael my brother great filmmaker won awards he's Michael's great and he's got a good drive good drive <laughs> <laughs> sorry and my little nephew Aiden made this t-shirt when he was uh-huh, a great age fabulous t-shirt it, I've had to wear it for Halloween. very cool looking oh but so <laughs> she's smugging for the camera that's very Aiden <laughs> uh, and but cl- but I, I think people who would look at your you know your all the different things you've done certainly and with Catherine O'Hara as well would would say you you do have drive you've done you, you you've done a lot I mean I wonder in your oh, case so what was the question then if you well the the question <laughs> no I'm kidding well, well, well the question <laughs> is becoming I, I like I'm kind of thinking right. as I'm sitting here listening to you and and thinking about your legacy I mean when you put out a record like Miss America when you get when you're so celebrated when people talk about how important a piece of art you've you've created is i wonder if that's just hard to follow up <laughs> you know well it's almost like emperor's new clothes it's like yeah i don't think you're thinking straight it's like it's like a token it was like wow what a lucky thing maybe it was like a nice thing to get after the years of like the crap that went on that i kept just weeding through and going it's fine it's fine it's fine let it go let it go you know i did a lot of steady going through the crap of the four years sorry i shouldn't call it crap so then it comes out and people are just jumping it's like but didn't the, the record company say to me that I won't, Cap, no, they, they said Captain Beefheart is weird, but he's good. You are weird and insane. And you were the worst thing we ever heard after the record was pretty well, close to be, oh, well, I'm going to sound real chip on my shoulder, aren't I? Or more of a sculpture, as I said. Uh, wow, I didn't. I shouldn't have come here, Mr. Cute. <laughs> Why do you say that? Because I know I'm going to be embarrassed by just the 
that I've done. I should have vomited backwards today. Oh, come on. Instead of out. No, you're just being honest about your... I mean, <laughs> people will appreciate that. Really. Really. You're just well, being honest about your experience. You haven't said anything bad. I don't think... It's not bad what I've said. It's more like how you believe that you can... You did say you were lower than a fan. fan At times you feel lower than a fan. I know, even, that was the Even worst. lower now than a fan. Now that is bad. <laughs> I can hold on to that and I'll know. But I, then I you judge. made fun of it. That so you judge. Got, it, was, it was okay. That's my fault. The concert you're bad. doing in, in Toronto uh, is billed as uh, free improv music with Michael Snow and, and Aiden uh, Cross. Can you actually... Kloss. Kloss, sorry. Sorry. What did I say? Cross? Aiden yeah. Cross. He sorry. gets it all the time. <laughs> <laughs> can you describe what the audience will hear tonight? How is it... How is it... <laughs> how is the... Is that Probably. what it'll be? Is there any structure? Do we, do we know? Well, if I people... think because I'm here, there's structure. Mm. You know, I mean, in the world. I don't think it's, you, you're not going to be able to go totally free, but it feels free. It's really nice that it's right happening. Um, it's anywhere. It's not, And it's best part is you new rehearsals. No, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no, but you just feel like when it works, it's uh the sad part is I would like uh, people to not come if they're going to be upset. <laughs> they're not going to be upset. Well, they're coming. They're coming to they a night come. of free improv. They're yes. they're 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 ready to experience anything. Yeah, it's open That's season, true. right? Open season. That's <laughs> even better. Come gunning. <laughs> the deer in the. Oh, no, no. <laughs> I can't. Now, you why can't do I feel win. like I can't say anything right? Yeah, um, you know. When well, we announced that you were coming on the show, I thought you were. We, we we were hoping that you might play, and then you sent me a note saying you would only sing if I sing with you. And then I implored you to sing alone, but you won't. But uh, but now we've made a deal, we, and the deal is that. Um, <laughs> are you up for this still? I don't remember. <laughs> no, I remember. Now the deal is that you're going to come in around Christmas time, and we're going to sing a song with with the band yeah. uh, together. But we're going to do a little taste of it right now, just freestyle in the air. Oh, I'm scared. Get the big right? Yes. All right. And we're going to get a close up on this. We've please. chosen Baby It's Cold Outside. We have not rehearsed. Am I? It's pretty cold. Yeah. We need a. Do you, we, need, we need the key, right? We decided B. Hang Thanks, on. Jan. I think that would be good. You can do those key things. I'm going to put my mother's. Uh, there's no camera over here. I'm going to put my glasses. I broke my glasses. I thought one's like my mother. Baby, it's cold outside. Okay, sorry. Are we, that That's it, oh, yeah. Maybe we'll put some free improv in it, too. <laughs> Take it away. Say, I'm ready. I'm ready for you. A little slower, baby. Okay. I really can't stay. Baby, it's cold outside. I've got to go away. Mm, baby, it's cold <laughs> outside. This evening has been... Been hoping that you'd drop so in. So very nice. Well, I'll hold your hands there just like My ice. mother will start to worry. Beautiful, what's your hurry? My father will be pacing the floor. Listen to the fireplace I roll. really can't stay. Baby, Baby it's, it's cold outside. outside. <laughs> <laughs> That was fun. We'll do that properly with instruments. Yes, and me not talking. Oh, come on. I'll get a script. Thank you so much for coming in. Thank you, Dollface. It's really the greatest. I I really, really enjoy having you here. It's been special for me. Me too, darling. That's legendary Canadian singer and songwriter Mary Margaret O'Hara live in Studio Q.